I feel like I'm voting for the future of this country and for democracy as we know it. What do you think a vote for Donald Trump represents? It represents the freedom from the United States, from all the isms that we could be uh, under if she was to win. One Kamala Harris voter, one Donald Trump voter. Their ideas about freedom almost flip sides of the same coin. On Election Day, voters will make their final decisions on the direction of their communities, our state, and our country. Whether you voted early or you're voting, uh, waiting, to, waiting until Tuesday to cast a ballot in person, we have the election guide every voter needs right now. It's brought to us by two journalists who've covered our elections very closely. Jen Fifield, reporter for the nonprofit VoteBeat.org, and Sasha Hupka, reporter for the Arizona Republic. Welcome back to Square Off. Thank you for having me. us, Bram. Uh, Maricopa County is in a 10,000-watt mega, 10,000 megawatt spotlight right now nationwide, a swing county in a swing state that could decide the presidential election with a history here of all kinds of things and an especially aggressive election denial community, let's call it. Let's start with election security. We heard a, heard a little bit from Chris Mays earlier. Maricopa County elections officials held a news conference this past week on security. Sasha, the message was, quote, zero tolerance. What does that mean? Yes, and so officials have been kind of tight-lipped, honestly, on the security details, but I think that what we can take from that press conference is that we should expect a heavy show of force, the same way that we saw in 2022 when minutes after the polls closed on Election Day, um, law enforcement officers came right into the county's election headquarters and basically locked it down. I think that zero-tolerance comment is both intended to warn and and deter people um, but also really intended to indicate the the type of security precautions they will be taking we know they'll have drones if this is anything like we saw in 2022 um, you know they may also have snipers certainly a heavy law enforcement presence in the area um, so yeah they're ready and so we remember a lot of the protesters flocking to mctech as we call it just south the building just south of downtown which is now really a fortress um, where are they going to go? That's a great question and one that I asked. If that the, happens. Yeah. The sheriff, what do you do? Because your fence is all the way out to the sidewalk. Where do you put them? He says there will be a place for people to express their First Amendment rights. But um, if people do get in the street, they did say they might have to take law enforcement action. What about security at vote centers on Tuesday? Voters might be concerned about attempts to intimidate them. We know there's a ruling that cameras will be allowed at the proper distance. People are allowed at the proper distance. How is that being handled? And just to add some context to that, so the polls are hard from a security standpoint because you can't just have law enforcement officers hanging out there all day while voters are going in and out. For some voters, that could be intimidating. It's against federal law. And so they have to figure out ways to make voters feel safe and to ensure they have law enforcement in the area to respond if something happens. And then they also, they're, they're focusing on training the poll workers to be able to de-escalate some of the conflicts that might arise. And that's really all they can do there. Um, so certainly, you know, conflicts at the polls, potential violence at the polls will be things that we'll be watching out for. Boy, we're asking a lot of poll workers that these we days. Are. That is, that, we are. that is an awful lot. One of the major storylines will be long lines, the potential for long lines. Uh, Jen, I'll start with you. How concerned are you, based on your reporting, about whether the county has really figured out the timing on this and whether they can get people through efficiently and whether they've, they really have a good handle on how long, long, long these lines could be? Yeah, I'm a little concerned, but they have added polling places, voting booths. They've tried to address this turnout that they think is going to come and the long ballot we're going to see. So I'm a little nervous, and I'm a little nervous about certain locations. Just a reminder, in Maricopa, you can vote anywhere. So if there is a long line, try to look around. So important advice there. In Maricopa County, you can vote, vote, vote anywhere. Where should they look for, for help if they want to go to a place without a line? Uh, maricopa.locations.vote, I believe, is Mar the website. Yeah, or I think bballotready.vote <laughs> sure. as well. Lots of places to look if you think there's going to be a line at your polling place. There was an, uh, a message sent out, I know one of our reporters actually got it uh, in the past week, an urgent call for people to come down and be trained. What was that about? 
Who they're, wants to take they're looking for ballot processors. The long ballot is two pages, and they need more people to open those ballots and get them ready for tabulation. They realize they need people working 24 hours overnight. And could those long ballots, they're a story in themselves, jam printers? Could there be unexpected problems with that, Sasha? Certainly, yeah. I mean, we saw technical issues right in 2022. They've revamped all of their equipment testing since then to more adequately um, kind of encapsulate the the conditions that are going to be present on election day if there's heavy turnout. But technical issues, it'll be something else that we're watching out for. Okay, I'm going to hold it right there. We're going to come back for a second block. When we come back, what happens after the vote and why a new law could delay results and the legal onslaught that could result from that. Stay with us.